backwards, I release. So you'll notice how I kept tapping and the horse went backwards and I didn't panic when the horse went backwards either. I didn't start increasing my pressure or increasing my rhythm when the horse went backwards. I just kept an annoying rhythm. As soon as the horse went forward, I released. I also am not going to panic now that the horse took a step back because I'm allowing the horse. He can make some decisions. I just want to be able to say when I begin tapping, the tapping doesn't go away until you take a step forward. So we're going to repeat. Drive the head away, begin tapping. Again, I don't want to use so much pressure that I cause the horse to blow up. We're watching signs. Do you see the tail? You see the horse back up a little bit. And I'm going to tap until that horse takes that step forward. When I'm working on trailer loading, again, the very best place to do trailer loading is at home when you have no reason to need to go anywhere. If this were five minutes before I was going to be late to a show, it would be very difficult for me to be patient about asking this horse to go up to the trailer. Because what happens is that people get a little bit of forward motion and then they think it's headed in the right direction, let me dump some more gas. And they, they step on the gas pedal by applying more pressure or doing something like that to the horse. And then the horse gets this pressure added near the trailer and they get this tension coming from the handler because the handler realizes that they're late. And so that's not a good time. Again, we're watching this horse's body language. We're paying attention to when the horse looks over its right shoulder, when the horse looks over its left shoulder, when the horse backs up. So again, just for the purpose of watching the body language, let's watch. I, I'm happy the horse is, is sniffing the trailer. I'm going to move his focus off from me. I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to see what his first reaction is. He didn't go backwards a couple other times. His first reaction when I reached up was to go backwards. I'm going to begin tapping with a little bit of rhythm. Just a little bit of a step is all you need. If you can keep in mind that the purpose of this isn't getting in the trailer to go to a show, that the purpose of this work is to understand your horse better, then you'll actually enjoy this whole process a lot more. I like that he checks in with me every once in a while, but again, I don't want to reward him for staring at me. Their body language will tell you a lot about what they're thinking, and so you saw him go up there, get his hind feet drawn up a little bit more, swish the tail just a little bit because there was that thought. And he's also asking some questions here because we don't know each other. He's going, I almost put my foot up. Is there going to be additional pressure added? He's thinking through this. You can see that body language. You can see the tail. You can see the eyes and the ear. He's trying to figure out who is this woman and what is she trying to tell me? And and I want to allow my horses to have part of this conversation. Now what I'm going to watch here, and you'll notice that that horse kind of came into my space a little bit. So if I need to, if that horse had come any closer to me, I would have needed to move that horse out of my space. So I need to be sure that I have the ability to get that horse out of my space. So let me back away from the trailer and show you a couple of those exercises. One of those exercises is that, again, being able to move their front end, because if I can move their front end over, then I can get that shoulder out of the way. Another one is being able to move their hip over. So I'm going to move this horse out here, and I'm going to, again, watch the body language. Now the horse is actually a little more reactive to stuff right now, maybe because we've been going longer, which could be that you know other people who have had loading issues with the horse have gotten frustrated at this point, so the horse starts to think, uh-oh, what could be coming? All of these are possibilities, but you know what? It doesn't matter. I get a lot of people who try to justify why the horse has a loading problem, and it's true, there are people who have done things to horses, horses that have experienced things that we wish that they hadn't, but it doesn't matter, we can start all over again. I've seen horses who have had trailer accidents that haul completely fine, and I've seen horses that have never been in a trailer that are just completely crazy about going in the trailer, and it's actually that trust and communication between the rider that is really needed. So let's move the hip a little bit. So what I want to do to move the hip is I want to know that I can 
ask this horse to move its butt over. So I'm going to actually apply a little bit of pressure to the halter pulling it towards me and I'm going to tap on that hip and swing that butt away. And I'm going to reward that again. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to kind of lean over a little bit and pull that head towards me. So I'm going to act like, get that horse to act like a teeter-totter. So I'm going to get that hip to move away. And the reason I'm doing that again is because we saw the horse just a minute ago go up to the trailer. And when the horse thinks about going to the right side of the trailer, what's going to happen is they're going to swing their hip into you. So if you have a cue to swing the hip away, it's going to swing the head towards you. So if you have a horse that keeps trying to escape off to the right side of the trailer, if you can do a cue like this where you can move that hip around, where you can get them to plant that front end and move that hip around, then you're going to have the tools you need to keep that horse from dragging you away. So we're going to get back up here. I'm going to drop that end of that rope. These nice heavy ropes are a lot safer to work around. Every time I pull this horse away from the trailer and I show the horse that I have control and we have a language, then it makes my odds of being able to load this horse a lot better. Now I'm going to actually ask the horse to go forward. Again, I'm going to drive the head with my one hand. We see the shoulder come over here. Woo! Big jump. Now the nice thing about working on this rope like this is I have several options. Depending on what the horse chooses to do, I'm okay with the horse turning around and coming right back out or backing off the trailer on its own because I'm going to let this horse use this as an opportunity to rest. Another issue that I do get calls about is people who have trouble backing their horses off the trailer. If you have an issue with backing your horse off the trailer, one of the cues that you need to teach the horse is a backup cue down here on the cannon bone. So when I want to ask the horse to back up, I want to be able to use this stick and string and I need to be able to tap with a rhythm, tap, 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 and when that horse takes a step back, I'm going to release. And the reason this cue becomes important is because whichever leg is further ahead, I'm going to begin to tap on. And when that horse draws that leg back, even if it just acts like it's swatting a fly, it's going to learn that when it takes the step back, then the pressure is released. And so that would be the cue that I would use up in the trailer, as opposed to holding onto the halter and trying to drag the horse back or using a chain and trying to jerk the horse back. And one of the great reasons about using this cue down here is that as the horse learns this cue, it'll actually be a lot more likely to drop its head down. And when a horse lowers its head down, it can do a better job of taking a backward step. A lot of times we see horses unload from the trailer and as they're backing up, their back feet get way up underneath them and their heads raise way up and they look almost like they're gonna tip over or falling out of the trailer. And a lot of that is nervousness. If they learn to relax and drop their head down lower, then they can step better. And so this cue being down here prevents me from being part of the problem of pulling up on their heads. Just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and send this horse back up to the trailer again. Now, if you have a horse that's being more difficult than this, another technique is not just to stand here and try to force the horse into the trailer. I actually want to stand here because I'm going to be able to send this horse in. And I want to know if I can send the horse around to the side, if I can ask the horse to reverse, and if I can send the horse back up. So if I have a horse that's being real sticky about going into the trailer, I can actually send the horse up there and give the horse a break when it's in this position. I can reward this horse and the reward isn't a treat. It isn't necessarily me scratching the horse. It is that horse being able to stand still. Then if I want to put the horse to work, I can send the horse out here, turn the horse back around. You'll notice that this gives us another place to practice some of these exercises and I can send that horse back up. And this becomes a little bit like target training where I'm teaching the horse the reward is over there. Another way to add a little bit more pressure to this game that I'm playing with this horse right now, this exercise of teaching, 
would be to move the horse away from the trailer to make the horse work even more. There we have a little bit of attitude. Move this horse around even a little bit more. Maybe reverse directions. You'll see that this there's a little bit of language lost here. Not quite as clear as it could be. And so what I'm doing is I'm making this horse a little more uncomfortable out here, learning a little bit more about the horse, and then I can send that horse up here. If I need to, I can drop the end of this whip. And so now the horse is thinking, can I turn and do I have another option? And so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell this horse there are no other options. I'm gonna make the other options a lot more work than this.